channel which was me bringing to you you know the news happening in the uh, high fashion industry and luxury fashion and just fashion news period um i would do it on a weekly basis but i just had too much to do so it kind of dwindled off like doing that on top of the other videos i would upload onto youtube and like you know outside life aside from youtube it just became a lot but there's been so much going on that i'm like i have to bring it back and it's so much to talk about that i didn't want to talk about it in another video so i'm like let me just make it its own video so i'm coming back with breaking fashion news episode 11 and i have recorded this damn video like three times three four times but you know we just gonna keep going until it's finished um but i have a lot of news to bring to you guys a lot has been going on I haven't done these videos in over a year, but I'm going to do what's been happening as of recently, the most important things. Because if I tried to do everything, you know, from the last time I did one of these till now, it, this would be too long of a video. But we're just going to do the most recent things and the most important. Um, so first, we're going to start with Fenty Skin. Fenty Skin is releasing on July 31st, and we are so excited. If you haven't heard already or signed up for the early access via your email, you need to do that now. I think you can access it through Fenty Beauty, and they have something on there where you can click it, put in your email, and supposedly there's going to be an early access that may be happening on the 29th and the 30th. Today is the 27th, so you have a little, little bit of time. So go do that now if you have not, but wait till the video is over. But yes, it is going to be releasing on July 31st. We don't really know what products are going to be released. I was doing some research because I did do a blog post about this as well. If you want to check it out, head to my website. It'll be the link in the description box. But um, we don't know exactly what products are going to be released, but I'm sure it's going to be a variation of products. It's going to probably be, you know, a starter line of beauty items or skincare items for you to use or to choose from. Um, so just have your coins ready and be prepared. We're sure it's gonna be affordable because all of her other businesses that she's created have been affordable for the girls to purchase. Um, our sis Rihanna is looking out for us. And of course, you know, she's gonna get the coin because it sells out, but she's looking out for us with the price. She's making it accessible to all. Um, so Fenty Skin will be only available, exclusively available on FentySkin.com. So make sure, like I said, that you sign up for the emails. Um, also, trying to make sure I don't forget anything. Um, yeah, like I said, we don't know what products are coming out, but we're excited anyway. The rollout, if you guys have not seen the marketing rollout, it's amazing. I don't know if it will be to anybody else, but for me, I love marketing, branding, business, all of that. Um, so I was very like at the marketing. So her first video was of her just using a product and kind of just announcing that Fenty Skin was going to be releasing. It was very clean, very simple. Her washing her face and using the products very up close. It kind of reminded me of one of those bold tutorials that they do with the celebrities on like YouTube and stuff. Sorry, y'all, I'm looking in the back just to make sure it's still recording because I will not do this video again. Um, but yeah, it was just a very clear, clean cut video of her using the product. Like I said, it kind of reminded me of the little bowl videos. Um, then she released another video that had like tons of influencers, tons of celebrities. I think Slick Woods was in there, ASAP Rocky was in there. It was showing that, you know, the skincare line is for everybody. It's unisex, men and women, like. It was great. I loved it. I enjoyed it. I feel like it was very 
clear cut and straight to the point which you know i feel like that's probably how the products are going to be clean cut straight to the point get the job done you know not too much not something that you need a thousand products to achieve what you're trying to achieve like you don't need a million products to wash your face like because i know me i'm the type of girl that i do kind of use a lot of products but not really like i don't like a million step routine like I like to use a lot of products if I want to use a lot of products, but I don't like to have to use a lot of products to get the job done that needs to be done. So we're sure that's probably what it's going to be from the packaging that we saw. We saw like some purples, kind of like how the Savage X Fenty like boxing is and branding is. If you guys ever order anything from Savage X, you know that the packaging is purple and like a rose gold. Um, so it kind of looked like that. So she may be keeping that same aesthetic. Um, we will see once again. And we cannot wait till it releases. So make sure you set your alarms, you set your clocks, you have your coins ready, you sign up for the newsletter, and you are just prepared for the Fenty Skin to release. And also on the 31st, Black is King, the Beyonce film, will be releasing. Yes. The Beyonce film, Black is King, will be releasing. We're sure that you've seen the um trailer videos a few of the previews a few of the looks styled by Serena you know the one who styled her all the time and we love it everything looks really good like but we don't expect anything less of Beyonce Beyonce always comes with the very amazing visuals because she has the creative mind and she has the budget um so yeah expect nothing less than amazing um it is exclusively available on disney plus on july 31st so make sure you use one of your million emails to sign up for a free trial make sure you get somebody else's account information something to make sure that you are ready to press play on july 31st you don't want to be trying to you know hurry up and get everything together on that day make sure it is prepared beforehand because the 31st would be very great very busy a great way to end the month Fifty skin and black is king beyonce on but like we were saying july 31st or why do i always say being it's just me anyway like i was saying july 31st is going to be a great day beyonce and rihanna in the same day doesn't get any better um so next is the telfar bag release so the Telfar bags, which if you've never heard of Telfar Global, it is a black owned unisex brand, clothing brand, clothing and accessory brand by Telfar Clemens. Um, he's been doing this for a very long time. If you wanna learn more about him, you can Google him or you can go to Young Stylish Lifestyle on Instagram. We did a designer highlight on him where, you know, we told some information about him and just kind of highlighted him and what he's been doing but over the past two to three years his shopping bags is what they're called have been getting lots of reviews lots of rave from like vogue harper's bazaar all of those places they come in different sizes so i believe it comes like a mini or a small the medium and a large um they range between 150 and 250 but they are very high quality items they are luxury they are black luxury and they are something you should spend your money on um but they do sell out quickly the girls who know fashion and who enjoy it is who i've always seen to carry the bags i first started to learn more about telfar and the company and the designer um last no was it last year yeah, maybe last year um, when I went to the show, I went to the Telfar Global Show um, during the Fashion Week, September Fashion Week, September New York Fashion Week. Um, I went to the fashion show and I also went to, I believe it was an open ceremony in Telfar party, I think. I think. But I went to the show for sure. But the party, it may have been just open ceremony or it may have been with Telfar. But um, yes, I went to the show and I started to hear more about him, learn more about him. I have been seeing him on Vogue and his things on Vogue, um, the website, and people talking about it, saying it was an it bag. 
And so I'm not complaining. So recently I went and finally looked at the price of the bag. So I went to the show and all that, learned, started learning more about him about a year, two years ago. And just now I went and looked at the prices. I thought that they were higher priced than what they are because I saw them as a luxury good. And they are a luxury good, but they are affordable for the people, for the real people, for the real girls who enjoy fashion and who love fashion but may not always have the money, access, or resources to spend six hundred to a thousand dollars on a bag. So he makes the bags between one fifty and two hundred dollars so that they are affordable for everyone. So they sell out all the time and everybody waits for restock. I signed up for the newsletter to be notified when there was a restock maybe two weeks ago but when i went over there everything was sold out and that's when i found out how much it was and i'm like dang i could have been got a bag but yes yeah, so i signed up and my friend called me on May thursday friday i don't even remember the exact date but there was a release he had emailed the customers saying that or the people who signed up for the newsletter saying that um there was going to be a release happening the next day or within the next few days and to be prepared he posted on his social media but i hadn't been on social media i've been under a rock since i lived here really and also my phone was acting so stupid that day when she had even called me to tell me what's going on i'm like it was a release of restock with the hero like where have i been so she's like yeah but the website is shut down like they shut the website down after just a few minutes of the event i'm like that's crazy she like you know if you get on there or if it opens back up and you see before me you know grab me a bag i want this color that color i'm like okay bet if you get on there and they open the key and grab me a bag i want this color that color so that was the conversation we had so once we got off the phone and i could finally get my damn phone to work i went on the website and it did say they had took the website down put in your email to be notified when it opens back up so i'm like okay so diet prada if you haven't heard of diet prada they like you know come and basically out brands that are stealing things from other designers or doing some shady business okay and diet prada posted the story that telfar posted like that telfar posted on their instagram story which said telfar is for the people not for bots or something around that way so i guess during the sale resellers were going on there and buying like 20 bags a piece and like to resell them for triple the price like there's bags on stock x for 600 dollars. mind you after i left off the website before i found out this is why they took the website down i went on the real real because i was trying to see you know it's bags on there blah 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 trying to do bags on there but they were all sold and like waitlisted and yeah, so they shut the website down because resellers were going on there buying 20 plus bags and like the people who actually wanted the bags to wear them for their own liking. Sorry, I'm just making sure it's still recording. But people who wanted the bags for their own liking weren't even able to get one, me and my friend. So that was crazy as hell. And they took the website down so that they could try to figure out how they can weed out the bots and the resellers from the actual customers. Um, and I hope that they are able to figure out, figure it out and bring it back. But that tells you a lot about that brand. That tells you a lot about Telfar Clemens, which is the, the designer's name. It tells you that he cares about the people and not about the money. Cause he could have, if this was Gucci or whomever, they would have just, they wouldn't have looked too deep into it. It just would have been what it was but because they're getting their money either way but you took your website down because you want to make sure that the customers who actually like your product that actually wear your product that actually represent your brand are able to get your product like that's amazing that shows integrity that shows a lot especially because he states that he's continuing to try to keep you know his products at the price that they're at because he could increase it some hundreds of dollars like i told you um designer bags are between 600 to a thousand plus if you want a chanel bag it's sixty five hundred dollars okay and everybody don't have that money to spend so some people want affordable luxury that is a thing you know and people deserve luxury people deserve black luxury black people deserve but yes it shows a lot about telfar that he decided to do that for his customers because they deserve it and it also says a lot about the resellers who came to 
buy all those bags knowing that he is trying to keep the price point at what it is so everyone can afford it he is trying to you know because like i said he can increase the price a couple hundred dollars if he wanted to a couple thousand dollars if he wanted to and i bet you people who have the means do still buy like he would make money regardless but that shows integrity and moral that he wants to keep the prices at an affordable rate for everyone because I'm pretty sure you know he's thinking of you know how he used to be and what he used to want and couldn't afford or what his friends may used to want and couldn't afford you know to get their hands on but really enjoyed it because a lot of the time the people most of the time the people who are wearing you know the name brands and all that stuff in the most you know expensive or you know popular luxury items at the moment aren't necessarily people who enjoy those items they're wearing it because one they have the money and two because they it's what's popular you know being able to buy high fashion doesn't necessarily mean you have style at all but it shows a lot about the resellers who came to purchase all of those bags that they don't give a damn about none of that. They just know that this bag is in high demand and that they can resell it and make some money because I'm pretty sure people did purchase the bag from them. I mean, people purchase from resellers, period, because they can't wait for restock. They don't know when the item is going to restock or they don't know if it's going to restock and for whatever reason, they just can't wait. They want their hands on it right now. Like instant gratification is a big thing for a lot of people. Um, so I'm glad he took the site down to weed through to see who's a reseller and who's not or block those people from purchasing. Not sure exactly how he plans to do that or how him and his team plan to do that, but I wish them the best of luck. I can't wait till I can get myself our bag because I've already, you know, come up with looks that I can put together to wear with my bag. It's lit, you know, it's going to be super fucking lit. Um, but, yeah, next, wait for, wait for a restock. Don't buy a resale. Once again, they're hiking up the prices on stock exit with some bags for $600, mind you. The bags are literally $150 to $250, just like the Yeezys. Yeezys are $250. People hike them up to like $1,000 plus, and people buy them. So, just use that as an example. Um, but yeah, if you didn't get your bag, sign up for the um, newsletter so that you can be emailed when they restock. Make sure that you paying attention to your um to your um, email. Make sure you pop in into the Telfar Instagram page every now and then just to make sure you know nothing popped up popped off without your knowledge. Because I know that's what I'm gonna be doing. Because I didn't even know there was a release. I probably wouldn't have even known until I got on Instagram later that day if my friend didn't call me. But nonetheless, just stay ready so you don't have to get ready. It's the overall thing. And we wish the Telfar Global team the best. Um, next is the Jacques Mousse Spring Summer 2021 collection. It was very cute. Um, you know that with the pandemic going on and all of the social distancing and you know quarantining and stay home orders that fashion weeks have been canceled. Um, they probably won't be back until we don't know. But they've been canceled. Some designers have decided to still do shows. Like I know Olivier did a Balmain show in Paris maybe two weeks ago, that's also on youngstylishlifestyle.com. No, Young Stylish Lifestyle, the Instagram page is also on the website too, but just go to the Instagram page if you wanna see that. Um, but yeah, they did a show in Paris on a boat, him and the models are on a boat while people watched from like the overpass or whatever you would call it and watched and took pictures. Um, so he was so, well, I guess not really because he was around the models, but they may have done temperature checks, whatever. None of the models were wearing masks or anything. He didn't have on a mask either, but I don't know about the audience. But um, he did a show, um, Jack Moose did a show, and they did it in like a, not a cornfield, but you know, it's like the high grass, like the straw grass. They did it in one of those fields. And like there were like blocks in between each person it wasn't six feet but they weren't right next to each other um so i guess they were trying to do some 
But yeah, so they were trying some form of social distancing, but it wasn't six feet apart, but at least they tried. I didn't see anybody with mask on, but the collection looked good. Jacquemus always does a great job to me. They are a brand that I hold very highly. Um, so love that. And also the aesthetic of the collection went very well with the aesthetic of the location. I will say that although they weren't social distancing, I don't know if they checked temperatures before they let people sit, but it was outside. So I don't know if I really see people lining up to get into a cornfield. I don't know, but it looked good. Um, next is the Hanifa 3D Digital Show. Now that was good. That happened maybe a while ago. Um, maybe like a month, two months ago. She did, if, you, if you're not familiar with Hanifa, Hanifa is also Black Luxury. Um, created by Anifa is her name. And Anifa M, her last name. I don't know how to pronounce it and I don't want to mess it up. But Hanifa is very good luxury items very cute every not everyday wear but like very cute pop out wear that's not too like evening wear like it's your middle of like high fashion and kind of street style a little bit but not really street style i can't really think of you know what type of fashion or style i'm thinking about but it's very cute it's not too too dressy it's perfect for summer like the color schemes that she uses the fits that she use that she uses like it's just a great job black people do it every time um like I said, it is luxury, so it's not going to be your, you know, fashion over prices, but it's going to be worth it because quality is there. Um, so if you haven't, I will go check her out. But she did a 3D digital show, which is something that has never been done before. If you see it again somewhere from another fashion house, they didn't do it first. Um, she did a great job. It was basically like outlines of black bodies like the real whole body with the clothes on i'll try to insert a clip maybe like it was something that i've never seen before something that was so well done it was like a virtual fashion show but without people like digital figures wearing the clothes and they made the clothes look good i try not to cuss on here because i don't think you can curse on youtube but they made the clothes look the blank good okay really good so if you have not heard of hanifa go check them out and buy something if you have the means to do so once again black people deserve black luxury um and black people deserve luxury in general but next is Billy Porter for Essence magazine. He was on the cover of Essence for, I believe, the June issue. Um, he is the first openly gay man to be on the cover of Essence. And that is amazing because, you know, we want to keep breaking those barriers of those first. I'm glad to see that he did this with Essence. I'm glad to see that they chose him and that they chose to highlight his story and to tell us more about him for people who don't know who he is. Billy Porter is the most fabulous person, one of the most fabulous people that I've ever seen. Like just him and who he is and how unapologetic he is about who he is in this life and that it is his life and that he but yes he does whatever he wants whenever he wants and i love him like i said if you don't know who billy porter is he is on pose um you can google him to get more familiar um next is the quarantine magazine issue so you know we've been in quarantine it's a pandemic for the last four months um but magazines have found a way to thrive because if they didn't, they probably would be a lot worse off than they probably were because no shoots are happening, like no large shoots because you know you have to social distance, you can't be around groups of people to prevent chances of getting sick. So a lot of magazines have been doing where the cover star shoots themselves or you know, is it done from a drone, whatever. Um, like 
Who did it? Someone did a drone shoot with Chloe and Halle, styled by Zarina. I can't remember whom it was, but I believe they did a drone shoot and they also did a drone performance for the Today Show. Um, but Alicia Keys also did a photo shoot where her kids took the pictures and they took some great pictures, but her kids took the pictures um, for her issue. Don't remember which magazine. It's all of these things are on Young Stylish Lifestyle's Instagram page. All fashion news is on there. But her kids took the pictures and recorded the BTS videos and all of that. Um, Tracy Ellis Ross did a quarantine shoot for, was it Allure? Um, Karuchi, she didn't do a, like a cover shoot, but she did an interview with Vogue.com. Um, a lot of different celebrities are doing quarantine shoots for magazines and I'm glad that magazines have found a way to continue putting out content during a time like this because I know for a young stylish lifestyle when all of this first started I'm like I'm not gonna have anything to post for a very long time because that business in that page runs off of the content from the fashion industry and if there is no content from the fashion industry there is no content for my business um, so I'm glad that a lot of magazines have found ways to continue to do this. A lot of stars who are doing other projects have found other ways to do the things that they're trying to do safely. Um, but we are kind of getting back into like a regularly scheduled program for a lot of people. People are doing shoots maybe with smaller people on set or like smaller amounts of people on set and not having so many people around. They may be doing temperature checks. They might be wearing masks. We don't know. We aren't there. But they're making it happen and we love to see it. Um, also, I wanna talk about the BT Awards. So the BT Awards came on on June 28th, I believe, and it was great. It was a digital show. It was the first award show to do this in a time like this. So if you see any other award shows copying what BT did, they did not do it first. You know, the black people did it first. Um, and we did well. So every performance was digital. Everyone did their performance like at their home or whatever location they chose. Like um, John Legend did his in like a warehouse. He had like a choir, an all black choir. They weren't really social distancing, but that's neither here nor there. They could have done temperature checks, whatever. But um, he did his in a warehouse. I know that the baby did his performance like outdoors um, on top of a police car featuring Roddy Rich. Roddy Rich looked like he did his in his home, but it was very nice. Um, everyone did theirs at different locations because it wasn't, you know, how it's usually in LA or something with the audience inside of like a stadium. It didn't happen that way. It's too much going around, floating around, but everything still came out well. The host still hosted. Amanda Seals was the host. She had on all black designers the entire night. She was styled by Brian Jovar. She had on 13 different looks that were all black created from black owned businesses. And that is amazing. I'm so glad to see that, you know, these black stylists are getting these jobs and able to dress these stars in clothing from black brands. Um, not always are all of the black stylists seeing their clients in black brands, but it's becoming implemented a lot more. And I think another great reason of why stylists should be doing this and this is coming from a perspective of being a stylist is because a lot of these showrooms a lot of these high fashion brands don't want us pulling from their showroom um i'm sure you guys may or may not have seen it but on diet prada or not even diet prada but colin carter which is cardi b stylist exposed one of the very well-known showrooms in new york for being racist the ceo um, was making racist remarks in his like messages with his employees calling 
um, the black stylists that were trying to pull clothes, like the Felicia's and calling their pull requests, like Felicia requests, and saying how his the clothing was becoming too urban, too many black people or black artists or black stylists were trying to wear the clothes or pull the clothes and it was just becoming a little bit much. So therefore we do not support him. We don't go anywhere that they don't want us. So it's great that a lot of stylists are starting more and more to implement black designers into their looks. They're you know reaching out to black small designers or larger designers, getting custom pieces. It's just a great thing to see. You know, when they go low, we go higher and our high always comes out 10 times better than what they thought they were going to get from their low. Um, but yes, he dressed her in 13 different looks. Like I said, all black owned. Um, she did a great job. Amanda did a great job hosting the BET Awards. She brought back a lot of memories from BET because it has been 40 years that BET has been running, which is amazing. It is one of the only and one of the most popular black TV networks. Even though it's not black owned, it still does a lot for the black community. And hopefully, you know, one day the forces that have the money can come together and buy back BET. But nonetheless, BT Awards were great. Like I said, Brian Gerard did an amazing job siding her. He's continuing to hand bitches their issue in his words. Um, so yeah, on to the next. Um, so Sweetie, that's it. That's all I have right now, Sweetie. Sweetie has been doing an amazing job. Like, sis is really out here. Um, and if you haven't caught on, I'm talking about Sweetie the Rapper. Um, Many like her more for her look and her style and her as a person than her as a rapper. I do like Sweetie's music. I've been listening to it for a while. Um, I'm not going to say I'll put her in my top 10 or anything like that, but I do like Sweetie as an artist and I like her as a person. I feel like she's continuing to grow as an artist. I feel like the look for her is is coming together very well. And once again, Brian Jobar is her stylist and he is continuing to hand the girls their issue. And that's his slogan. But he's doing great from her quarantine shoots to her looks for covers and different magazines like sis looks great she's doing a great job like her look that she's creating for herself is is doing well for her and we love sweet here um next is curry jean raymond directing the wale sui video so this happened a while ago um before the pandemic i feel like but sue me is a song off of wale's album um i don't remember the name not the one that just came out but the one before that uh something that's crazy and i love wale and i can't even think of the name i'm gonna find it so i can tell y'all but um let's see it's something wow that's crazy or that's crazy something like that but sumi was on that album that released not over the summer but maybe after last summer had just ended don't get me wrong but great song my favorite off the whole album he mentioned pierre moss which if you don't know kirby g raymond created pierre moss he mentioned pierre moss in the song um once again black luxury black people deserve black luxury um but he brought on Kirby to direct the video. We love to see it. I think that's a great thing. Hiring black creatives and giving black creatives opportunities to portray black stories is something that needs to happen more often. Um, too often than not, we get, we get, what is the word I'm looking for? We get X out of the rooms that we're trying hard to be in. And not because we necessarily want to be with the people that are in those rooms, but because we want that stature. We want to be able to show our talent in that light, in that high fashion light, in that upper scale, upper echelon of light. Not that we are necessarily trying to fit in with them or become what they want, but we know that our work deserves to be in that arena. And I'm glad that more 
black artists or people, black people that have platforms are now giving a light to, they're reaching a hand back to pull other black creatives up. Like I've mentioned in other videos, it is important that if you're on a set and they need a stylist, they need a hairstylist, they need a makeup artist, that you call on your black friend. You call on, and I'm not saying you're a black friend, like if you're a white person, go find your token black friend. But if you are a black person that is on a set and they have a job available and need somebody to fill it, post it on your Twitter, post it on your Instagram story, post it on your Facebook, text somebody that you know, phone a friend, like we need to pull each other up because they're not gonna go look for us. They're just gonna, you know, steal from us and act like they don't see us. But they're not gonna go look for us. So you be on the lookout for those other creatives that do good at this, that, and the other. Like it hurts you no way to help uplift another person. It helps you. I mean it hurts you no way at all. But I'm glad that we are seeing this and it makes me very excited as you can probably tell. Now on to the next. The remix hip hop times fashion documentary that came out on Friday, I think. That was created by Lisa Cortez and Farrah X, and it starred Missa Hilton, Dapper Dan, Kirby Jean Raymond, Bevy Smith, April Walker, all of the important black people in fashion. Like, it's a great documentary. It's on Netflix. Um, it's only like an hour and some change. It's something that I personally will watch over and over again. I've already seen it, seen out of skin for me. I also did a blog post about it on my website. The link will be in the description box. Um, but I would go watch it if I was you. It, it finally puts us in a conversation that we always deserve to be in. Black people have had a hand in fashion since the beginning of time. You know, back when the Kennedys were, you know, needed people to make their dresses. A black woman was designing those dresses, but a white person's name was being put on it as if they created it. You know, we've been doing this since they've tried to pay us next to nothing. Like we've continued to do it. It talks about how Dapper Dan, you know, made his footprint within the fashion industry and for black people and black artists in the music industry and the powers that be at the fashion industry and the gatekeepers, black bottom, he had to go out the ground, close his boutique, rated them like he was the biggest drug dealer in the world. Like, they do whatever they can to make sure that we look no better than them. And I'm glad that this documentary finally brought the black people who deserve to be in the conversation in the conversation or bring black people in the conversation because black people are the reason why the fashion industry exists. If you don't know, you should know. We are the blueprint for all of the collections that go down the wrong way. We are the blueprint for all of the fashion show ideas we are the blueprint for the new style trends that they talk about on vogue the you know top 10 trends for the summer that they talk about on harper's bazaar we are the reason we the culture is the reason why you have fashion period and it's very important and very exciting that there's documentation of that that they decided to create a documentary that show the receipts. They brought the receipts to the conversation. The conversation was already being started amongst us. You know, we are. And lastly, Chloe and Hadley, like they've been doing everything right that can be done right during this whole quarantine stay home pandemic. Like they've been on several covers. They've performed on several shows. Like I mentioned before, they did the Today Show via drone. Um, beautiful performance. That's also on the Unstylish Lifestyle, the Instagram page, if you want to watch it. Um, they've just been doing amazing. Um, their stylist, Serena, has still been styling them to a T. And they're just overall great performers. They sing, they act, they dance. They can hold a performance and do all of those things at one time. Like, they, they are an amazing duo and they are also amazing performers separately and artists separately and they've just been doing amazing and they're so young so they have so much more to do and so much further to go but if you haven't seen them go look at their Instagram and watch some of their performances because they are great and their music is catchy it's real cute I like it 
Um, but that was everything. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm glad that I could get this out. Like I said, it was so much to talk about, so I didn't want to put this into another video. That's why this video is so long, but I promise that you'll like it. And if you're anything like me, you would like to hear somebody else's perspective on these topics. But make sure you guys subscribe, and I'll be back with another video. Peace out.